Hi everyone and good afternoon from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and the Dollywood theme park. Today, we're gonna to take quite the walk. We are. We're gonna go all around Dollywood showing you off everything this theme park has to offer and just take a full park walkthrough. I go by the legend, I'm by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. We're gonna go get our steps in right now. So right now when you come into Dollywood, you're greeted by the Palace Theater. Now the shows at Dollywood, they tend to change seasonally. So the show they might have in spring might be might be different than the show they might have in summer, which would be different than the show they have at Christmas time. Right now, it is a Southern Gospel group that is performing in here. Now, also in the front of the park, you do have the Dollywood Emporium. That is actually how you leave the park and the biggest gift shop in the park as well. Uh, on the left over there is gonna be the Ride Accessibility Center, where if you do have some sort of a, a special needs, that's where you would go to get your ride access pass. Now, over here on the right, this is something that's fun. This is the Dollywood Bakery, and this is where you can get the famous 25 pound apple pie. Ah, yes. I, I don't know who would need a 25 pound apple pie, but you could buy one in there. Now, they, do they also sell some bread in there as well? I believe they do, but I'm not 100%. They do have a lot of good treats. Yeah. And it smells fantastic. It smells really fantastic. good. Now, over here on the left, you're going to see a series of buildings that is going to be for a candy kitchen as well as ice cream. As we walk here under the Parasol Avenue, now, right now, we are visiting Dollywood in the first week of May, so they have their flower festival going on. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a lot of topiaries around the park and some other, you know, food booths. And that is all for the flower and food festival. Now, Dollywood does a lot of different special events. There's the, like, I Will Always Love You Festival is first, and then it's flower and food, and then it's some sort of, like, all-American summer. Then it's pumpkins, and then it's Christmas time. Christmas is really nice. Christmas yeah. is nice. I do love the parasols, and it's really, it's very Instagram here. Yes. Uh, over here on the right is a gazebo where they will have live music. Um, when you come into Dollywood, they have maps that tell you all the times for all the different performances, and uh, they have a lot, a lot of music in the park. They do. Over here on the right side, this is actually going to be opening in about three weeks from when we are filming this, and that is going to be the new Dolly Parton experience. Um, they took the old Chasing Rainbows Museum, there was a big store here as well, and they're building more new and modern museum exhibits. There's going to be a show over there as well. Um, if you're coming to Dollywood for Dolly, that is where you're going to spend a lot of time. I just thought the old museum was pretty well done, so I'm assuming the new one would be way better yes and there's also a uh, dolly tour bus yep mm -hmm. she must have multiple tour buses because i believe at one of the dollywood hotels you could pay like an absurd amount of money and stay in dolly's tour bus i would not be surprised yeah yes i uh we stay at a local uh, micro hotel for like 60 dollars a night <laughs> we are not affording dolly parton's tour bus experience <laughs> Uh, you'll probably hear us say this a lot, but Dollywood is a very pleasant park. It's very clean. It's very pretty. There's lots of shade in parks. Lots of good snacks as well. She's getting lots of good food. Now, somewhere we've never eaten, and that's over here on the left. That is the Front Porch Cafe, which is a full-service restaurant. I mean, they do have a smoked pork belly BLT, and that's that sounds right up my alley. That does. You see all sorts of characters, sure things, and... They do have a lot of specialty stuff for the festivals. Now, as we're walking around, when you see those topiaries, that is going to be specific for this time of year. And uh, they're nice. Mm -hmm. You can definitely tell Dollywood got some inspiration from Epcot Center and their Flower and Garden Festival. I don't think it was a coincidence that the Flower and Food Festival started. Up right it says Festival Food. That is where you're gonna find the Dollywood Big Skillet, which is a uh, very popular food establishment. For me, I don't think it's that great. I know I might get a little bit of heat for this. I love it, but it doesn't change that much, I find. Yeah, right now it's like just sausages and it's just sort of okay. Now, if you go up the hill that way, you will get to the Celebrity Theater, which is the biggest theater at Dollywood. And again, the shows at Dollywood change. We actually just got out of the Celebrity Theater. It's that big building right there. And that is where right now they're showing a, a, a big like hour long musical all about the life and music of Dolly Parton. It was really well done. They had different versions of Dolly. So you got every single version. Yeah, and it was like some really cool like like quick changes where Dolly, it would be one Dolly and then boom, in a half second it would be a different Dolly. You can see Dolly's tour bus right over there. It is also really pretty with the stream and everything. Indeed. All right, now we're going into a different section of the park. I'm sure it has a name. I don't know what that name is, but this is like the 50s area of the park. Home to the Pines Theater, which right now there is a uh, musical quartet playing in there. 
I believe during the summer, this is where you find like the big Dollywood show, Dreamland Drive-In, which is a very, very good show. That is, that is a good show. Yeah, more uh, looking at the construction area, which by the time I post this video, that thing's gonna be open. <laughs> we just missed it. Yep. Moving ahead in this 50s area, you do have Red's Drive-In, which is gonna be, you know, burgers and fries. Your standard theme park fare is in Red's Drive-In. On the right is the High Octane Gift Shop, where if you want any gifts for the Lightning Rod Roller Coaster, one of the park's most popular rides, you would buy it in there. Also, you can see a lot of these refill machines all around the park. That's because they do sell these big old jugs of Coke. And uh, it gets hot here, Dollywood. And you get, that refill does help quite a bit. Now getting what I believe is our first ride that we've shown off, and right ahead of us is Lightning Rod, also the park's most intense roller coaster. Yes. It is a big giant wood steel hybrid roller coaster built by RMC. It goes off into the mountains. I love it. This is by far my favorite ride at Dollywood. Uh, we, we were here like right in the morning. This is the first thing we did. And uh, I love it. I think it's great. A world class, high thrill roller coaster is Lightning Rod. I really like the front row on this ride. Yeah, the back row is pretty intense. Yeah. And it's a little rough on the Yeah. On the back you really, uh, you can't see Lightning Rod. And that's the thing with a coach of the roller coasters here. You can't see it too well from in the park. But uh, they're, they're, they're out there and they're on the mountains. Right ahead of us is the Rockin' Roadway, which is a, a typical antique car style ride. Um, it is one I would say try to ride early on in the day because that line, it does not put through a lot of people. So uh, the lines get long for the Rockin' Roadway. It's cute, it has music when you, yeah. you drive like a 50 style car. It's a very, very cute attraction. Now, I believe when we go over this bridge, we will be exiting the 50 section. You can see somebody driving by in their, their rock and roadway car over there on the right. We exit the 50 section and get back into like, it's kind of just a general Smoky Mountains area. Yeah. And of course, some ducks over here on the right. Now, Dollywood, it doesn't have the easiest layout, especially in the front. So I'm not sure, I don't think we're gonna hit like every single building and every single restaurant. I'm gonna pop over here on the left to show you what is across the lake. Uh, first of all, you've got, we're not gonna get a good angle of it, but my favorite topiary at the festival is right there. It's adorable raccoons. <laughs> and right behind the adorable raccoons, that is Aunt Granny's. And that is the buffet restaurant here at Dollywood, an all-you-can-eat buffet. Some good uh, you know, southern cooking style food in there. And we're gonna have over here on the right is a, one of the older rides at Dollywood. That is the Smoky Mountain Rampage, which is the park's River Rapids attraction. Now, I will say I, I love going to theme parks. I love going on roller coasters. Put me on a spinny ride, sure. Something that's gonna get me soaked, I am not a fan. Yeah, I'm not a fan with that, when your shoes get wet. Yes. And everyone, if you look, everyone has their feet up. Uh, yeah. And I say that as we're passing a raft that does not have their feet up. But yeah. you can uh, get pretty wet on this. There's little dips and hills. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Like, your feet would be soaked. Now, I would say, like, in July, that probably feels great. Oh, yeah, because it does get hot here. Yeah. Today, it's about 65 degrees. <laughs> I'm going to turn around real quick because that is probably your best shot of that lightning rod roller coaster. Now, if you have been to Dollywood in the past, this used to have a launch lift hill. It no longer does. All right. And for a quarter, you could squirt your friends. Or they don't have to be your friends. They could be somebody you don't know. But that, to me, sounds like more fun than going on the Smoky Mountain Rampage. You do actually get to see quite a bit of the Smoky Mountain Rampage as you're going around. And there's lots of little quirky parts of Dollywood here as well. So like up here, there is just a random bridge that takes you across the stream. Now I believe it's, there are some fish in here. Yep, you see some big old fish. Swim by, there's one right on cue. Thanks for helping out there, pal. Where are we going? And uh, we're gonna turn back over the bridge. There are some really pretty parts of that Smoky Mountain Rampage as well. Like over here, you can see the big waterfall. You kind of go past the waterfalls on one side, and then you go past more waterfalls on the other side. You do have like a cannon. Yep, that thing. And if you're timed wrong, you can definitely get soaked by that cannon. Yeah. Over here, you're gonna have more 
booths for the festivals that are going on. Uh, you can buy a tasting pass. I, I don't think the tasting pass is a great value. Right now, with the, the Spring Festival going on, it is $40 and you get five samples. So that's like $8 per sample. It is fun, it is different. Uh, something that I think is really cool that Dollywood has, again, if you're a Dolly person, that over there is a recreation of the house Dolly grew up in, and you can walk through it. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. There's definitely things for everyone to do. Like yes. For a family member, mm -hmm. uh, little kids, yeah, older folks. It's a very family friendly park. And they've got dogs and taters. Those look fantastic. <laughs> and another refill station is over there. Which is good. All right, now we are going to, uh, we're going to take a right here, and that's going to lead us towards a dead end. Um, so when I pick up the video after this cut, it's going to be right around over here, and we're going to walk past that theater going that way. But first we're going to go to the right and head towards the county fair section of the park. Um, there's also a celebration buffet over there in county fair. Now, one thing we've seen Dollywood events in a lot recently has been infrastructure in the park, you know, uh, Dollywood, I believe it was built in the 70s or 80s sometime, and it does way more attendance now than it did back then, so. Yeah, it definitely has like kind of the Disney World problem where it, it was built for way less crowds. I would say Disney World was built for much more reasonable crowds than they have now compared to what Dollywood has here. I guess, yeah. The Fantasyland section. I can see that, I can yeah. see that. And Disneyland. Over here on the left, as we get on, is where you would board the Dollywood Express, which is closed for the day. The Dollywood Express is the big train ride here at Dollywood. Now, Molly, you were just talking about the, the Magic Kingdom of Walt Disney World. This is not quite that kind of train. No, it's not. This train leaves probably once every 40 minutes or so, and it's a round trip. So you think about some theme parks, you hop on the train in, you know, Main Street, and you exit in Frontierland. That is not the Dollywood train. It's Dollywood. not a mode of transportation. No. Um, very, very popular ride. I believe the times of the train is listed on the website or on the map. And you'll definitely want to get there early because that train, it fills up. Especially at Christmas time. Oh, it's nuts. The line is so long because mm -hmm. they, at the turnaround, they put Christmas lights. And they only have one train. It's not like other theme parks when but it's a round trip and they go up and back. Like, they've only got one train. On the right over here, somewhere I've never eaten at Dollywood is the Iron Horse Pizza. The flatbread actually looks pretty good. And just more, Dollywood's got a lot of charm. Like the big water tower with the trestles and all the little waterfalls. Just, it's a very, very pleasant place to be. It is. As we make our way, I, I don't think I've ever been here when I've seen the train close. No, no, I've never seen the train close. And I believe the train is probably like the, the highest rated attraction by the guests here at Dollywood. Mm-hmm. What's well, fun to ride that type of train? Yes. Five days and not. Now, before we head right into the county fair area proper, you go straight ahead, there is a carousel, and then past that carousel is going to be a theater, and that theater shows a movie about the Smoky Mountains. I believe it's called Heart Song. Uh, I think it's narrated by Dolly. I've never seen it. I've always thought about it, just never hit it at the right time. And we're going to head down to the right over here into the county fair. And I will be honest, county fair, probably my least favorite section of Dollywood. It's definitely the section we don't spend uh, much time in usually. No, if there's any part of Dollywood that kind of feels more like any theme park anywhere in the U.S., that is county fair. It's where you get your midway games and you get... Well, that's actually a really fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's my favorite ride down in this corner of the park. For me, it's more of the kids' fish rides. Yeah, if you're looking for spinning rides, yeah. there's a couple rides down here for the little ones. But it, it does feel like like a Six Flags or a Cedar Fair. It's not as well themed as Yes. The but you do uh, can win Pokemon. Uh, yeah, you so can win some Pokemon. Molly, if you had to take, take your pick, you could win any of them. Which one are you winning? Uh, I mean, like, I like Charmander, so... Uh, I'll go for, uh, I'll uh, rep the Squirrel Squad, I think, for me. Yeah. Now, that buffet we saw the sign for, it is back over there. Which I believe is kind of like a, a venue they can use to be rented out for, like, private events. But, to help them increase with food capacity, well, they could turn it into a buffet at some point. 
And this is some of the only places to play uh, Midway Gates, right? Yeah, you've got some by like Tennessee Tornado has some. And again, Dollywood, very, very pretty. Like, look at all the flowers they have just in this. And that's not part of the flower. No, that, that's festival. always here. Yeah. You can see a, uh, I don't even know what they call this one over here on the right, the little kids drop tower ride. Shooting star. Shooting star. Now, if you've been to Dollywood before, they used to have a kids roller coaster themed to the Veggie Tales over here. That, um, that is no longer here. That's been no. removed a couple <laughs> years ago. They also used to have a Ferris wheel over there that has also been removed. So I guess that's part of the reason, I, again, like, County Fair is not my favorite. Yeah. Like, they've been uh, removing and removing, and they haven't been adding back to County Fair. For me, like I said, it's not greatly themed. Like, no. Well, I mean, it's themed to the County Fair. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like an easy way. It is, yeah. It's an um, easy theme. Yeah. Over here on the right, you got a couple of couple of theme park staples. You got the Scrambler, and that building there is the Demolition Derby, which is the park's bumper cars. And if I keep going a little bit farther, you're gonna get the big flying swings. Again, obviously Dollywood is in the mountains, so you get some really cool backdrops like that. Now we are getting close to the, the dead end I was mentioning earlier, as County Fair does just dead end in this corner of the park. And you do have uh, two more theme park classics. Yep, you got the teapot, the, the, the teapots, that is not what I meant to say. <laughs> the teacups, as well as the flying elephants. And then if you went on that pathway over there, past the bumper cars, you've got a couple rides for the very little ones. And um, there aren't a ton of rides for the toddler set here at Dollywood, but you would find three of them over there. Now, if you've been to Dollywood in the past, you would have known that at the all dead end, that would be where the old Dizzy Disc used to be. And that got removed this past off season. But that brings us to our dead end. So we're gonna take a, let my voice rest for a minute and we'll be back at that theater. And here we are back at that theater. This is the Back Porch Theater. Today it's home to the Smoky Mountain String Fan performing four times a day. I do like this topiary over here on the right as well. Yeah, the black bears. Yeah, a lot of the topiaries are gonna be of animals that are native to the Great Smoky Mountains. And the most famous of those, of course, the big old black bear. Do a store over there on the left, butterfly strings. I love, this actually, I like this a lot over here as well. The, the turtles turtle and the frog. frog. Now we're not gonna make it up that hill, but in that building there, that is the blown glass area. As when we cross over this water trestle here, then we're going into what's known as Craftsman's Valley, which for me is kind of the heart and soul of Dollywood. This is where, the way I would describe Craftsman's Valley is, if you've ever been to Epcot Center, Craftsman's Valley is if the World Showcase had a pavilion for Tennessee. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see it. There is a lot of artisans here doing their art, like the glass blower we just passed, it's really cool. And the thing with the, the glass blower as well, I believe for, you could pay a fee and then you could actually do, the, like learn how it works. Over here on the right is, they are fixing up an old restaurant, kind of bringing it up to modern standards. And over here on the left, one of the most popular things at Dollywood, that is the grist mill where you can get the famous cinnamon bread. Yes, that's the main location. Yeah. Again, I think it's also sold in the bakery. It might yeah. just be on really, really busy days. But I feel like you gotta get it from the grist mill, right? Yeah, if you've uh, never had it before, definitely get it. Very similar yeah. like a Cinnabon. Yeah. Now up here on that hill, you're gonna see the big old Barnstormer, which is a big giant swing ride. Really fun. Welcome back to another show venue here on the right. If you want to spend all day at Dollywood, you could probably just go to all the shows and not ride a single ride. Yep. There's so many different types of shows and music. It is forever country being performed in there. A really few of these artists have gone on to become country music. And where you can enjoy that cinnamon bread. A restaurant I really enjoy, it's a full service restaurant, Ham and Beans. They have a appetizer in there that's amazing. It's pork rinds with a pimento cheese dip. It's so good. Uh-huh. Now we're getting into that, that heart of that Craftsman's Valley, so you're gonna have a leather workers over here. And they, they obviously sell a lot of the stuff as well, so there'll be leather and hats you can buy in there. 
just trying to get away from that show a little bit. All sorts of fun stuff you could buy there. They grow like this, right? It does give uh, this uh, this area gives Dollywood their charm. It does. They really do. Yeah. And uh, you can see that that water trestle does run all throughout Craftsman's Valley. And to get to that uh, swing again, this is the pathway. Uh, yeah, you would head up that way to get to the barnstormer. Dollywood is known for its hills. It's yes. A very hilly park. You are in the Smoky Mountains. You feel it a lot. There is a hat shop over there. More caricatures and then a festival booth. Now, over here on the left, that's one I'm a sucker for. That is the Smoky Mountain Christmas store. I, I love me some Christmas. Yeah. Um, always I, have to go in there. Yep. I think it's uh, probably my favorite time of the year to visit Dollywood. Mm -hmm. But then, one thing, if you come during Christmas time, all the rides might not be running because they've got to be a certain temperature to run. Yeah. Uh, Dollywood's really good. They have it on their website, the minimum temperatures for those rides to operate. So there is no no real questions about whether it's going to run or not. This is a Build-A-Bear, which really doesn't fit <laughs> in Craftsman's Valley, right? Oh, no, that used to not be a Build-A-Bear. No. I can't remember what it used to be. I think it might have been the woodworker. Yeah. Now over here on the left is the general store. Just exactly what you think it's going to be. Over here on the right, that's really cool. This is the blacksmith shop. And this one, I believe, like the glass blower, you can go in there, and if you want to pay the fee, like, I don't know exactly what you make in there. I should have walked through earlier, but I know <laughs> a different thing. I think it might be a knife, actually. I think it is a knife. But you, uh, there's usually always someone working. It's very rare that we have passes and someone's not in there doing something. Nope, you crazy. see that man doing his stuff right there? Yeah. Over on the right is the chapel at Dollywood, and um, that is most days of the week used for a, the, the porch is used as a show venue, so there's going to be a lady playing music out there. If you are here on a Sunday and you are a religious person, they do do your, your traditional service. On the left, the candle store, you know, again, another one of those artisans. I believe you can dip your own candles you can, in there. You can, it's fun. I've done that one time, and that's a, a very unique very kind of fun project and a uh, different souvenir as well. Yep. We uh, we got very lucky with the weather today. There was a forecast of rain. It has not really rained. It drizzled a little bit. Now, just like Disney, I do think Dollywood is always busy. So yes. Prepare for crap. We're here on a Friday in early May, and there's a lot of people and here. And the town was dead yesterday. Yeah. Up here on that hill, that's going to be Daredevil Falls. That is Dollywood's log flume ride. Really pretty log flume built into the mountain. Yes, that one's a fun one. You don't get soaked on. No, you don't. Uh, I would recommend going on it. And with Daredevil Falls as well, it's off the beaten path a little bit, and it's got a really high capacity. So normally the lines for that aren't quite as bad as some of your other rides. <laughs> on the right over here, we're coming up on Eagle Mountain. If you see that netting, that is a giant sanctuary for bald eagles. It's like non-releasable bald eagles. Yep. And another uh, topiary I really like. The, the beekeeper. beekeeper. I think that's a very unique one. Yes. There was, we did pass by a beekeeping exhibit earlier. Uh, usually the bald eagles are all the way at the very, very top. Yeah, you can see a couple of them. They're not usually uh, close to the people. That one's actually kind of close. It's at the top We're of the tree. We're gonna use the, the old super zoom there. But there's a whole big group all the way in the back. Yeah. But it's fun. Mm -hmm. Over here on the left is the Hickory House Barbecue. You would think it makes sense that this section of the park has a, a barbecue establishment. It does smell good. It does. I want to show this off because uh, last year the big new ride was the Big Bear Mountain. So to go along with it, they made this sandwich. The Big Bear Feast. That sounds good. I know. Moving along, more of Craftsman's Valley. One thing I wish Dollywood did was um, you got a lot of this blacktop around the park, and during the summer it kind of like radiates heat. Mm -hmm. On the left is gem mining, so if you want to, you know, spend some money to grab a bag of dirt and then sift through it to see what you get. On the right is kind of your only show here at Dollywood that is not singing and dancing. That is the, uh, I think it's the Wings of America, mm -hmm. and that is their bird show. 
they bring out all different types of mostly birds of prey. Yes. So raptors and owls and eagles. If you are a, uh, a fan of birds, you will definitely enjoy it. And they, I would re definitely recommend getting an aisle seat as well because they'll walk the birds through the audience. Now when the show's not going on, you can't also see the birds on yes. the right hand side. You can see like a big turkey vulture kind of guy. There's a hawk. A really nice looking hawk. Yeah. But these are the birds that are. Oh, and look at the little owl. Yeah, pretty much the show is you, you see those birds there? Well, you'll learn about them for about 30 minutes if you go to the show. You got a cool waterfall, and that is where that, that water trestle we passed under earlier, this is where it starts and works its way all the way down Craftsman's Valley. Again, another really pretty section yeah. with that waterfall. Right in front of us, we're back to rides now. And this is one of the most classic rides in all of Dollywood. Blazing Fury is a, probably a good three, four minute ride. Um, much more of a themed ride than you get at a lot of the Dollywood rides. It takes you through a, uh, a mountain town that's on fire. There's some little roller coaster drops as well. It's a great ride. For me, that's one I have to ride every single time when I come up here to Dollywood. It's a very family friendly uh, roller coaster. It's not huge drops. There is a two drops, I think. Two or three. Yeah. And it, um, it works really well if you're five or if you're 75. Yeah. So I do like that quite a bit. Now, if you happen to come to Dollywood at Christmas time, this area has a lot of really nice lights in it. Yeah. Coming up right in front of us, that is Tennessee Tornado. Now, we, once we get to the back of the park, you get to some of the more bigger roller coasters. Tennessee Tornado, a ride I like a lot. Big looping roller coaster built into the mountain. This is another coaster that's kind of hard to see. Yes, you get like one view of it where they bring in some food trucks. Yeah. Now, Tennessee Tornado, one good thing about that, it does not tend to get long lines. No. Some of the coasters here at Dollywood, they get very long lines. Tennessee Tornado, if you're here on a busy day, you could normally ride that with not as long of a wait. It's uh, definitely not my favorite type of ride, but I will say it's one of the smoothest of that type of coaster. Yes, if you are a, a big coaster guy like I am, this was built by Arrow Development, and it's one of their only, in my opinion, one of their only good rides. <laughs> they, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. Okay. I know I'm going to get flamed in the comment section for it. <laughs> Old busted roller coasters that bang your head around. Not my jam. No, no, me either. But, I, uh, whenever I look at it, every time I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to. But then I forget how good this one is. Yes, and the line too. Like, yeah. Again, this is that second section of Midway Games over here. And an arcade. That's one of my favorite Midway Games to watch, is the three-point shootout, just like if you're at uh, NBA Saturday night. <laughs> Over here on the right is where you're going to get a view of the Tennessee Tornado roller coaster. Also, the entrance to the roller coaster is right here. And there you can see the rides. A signature element is that big, giant loop. It's see, going up right it's going up right now, so we'll show you that loop here in a minute. I would assume this one is not a very long line. They'll also bring some food trucks over here. Again, Dollywood was built a little early on. They don't quite have the food capacity that other like mega parks have. So they brought in some food trucks to help mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Smart move, good guest service. And let's let's see this loop go. Um, you don't see the train because again, it goes into the mountain. Yeah, the drop is like in a big tunnel. That's really, really cool. And there it goes. Oh. See, see, that, that man approves. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like I said, it's way smoother than what it looks like. Yes. So. Tennessee Tornado have not gotten on it today yet. That is um, on my list of rides I definitely want to go on once we finish recording this full walkthrough of the park. Up here on the right is a wonderful roller coaster. Unlike Tennessee Tornado where it's a high thrill coaster, pretty intense, this is a more of a gentle roller coaster for families, but it does have some pop to it. Yeah, no, it's one of my favorite uh, coasters here at Dollywood. I love the elements that they have. Yeah, and it's, I love the theming of the trains. Yes, yeah, so this is Fire Chaser Express. It goes forwards, it goes backwards, it's got a lift hill, it's got launches. It's got a wonderful show scene with like real fire. Mm -hmm. I will give you a heads up though. Fire Chaser Express, it only puts, I think 14 people on each train. Yeah, no, So it's a... it, it doesn't have the greatest capacity. 
and the lines for Fire Chaser Express can get pretty long. Yeah. This is one I would say definitely try and hit early. Your longest lines at Dollywood tend to be Fire Chaser Express, Dragonflyer gets a very long line, depending on the day. It could be Lightning Rod and Mystery Mine. Those tend to be your longest lines. So those are the ones I would try to prioritize hitting as early as possible. Like we rode this at about 10.30 or so in the morning today and we waited probably about 15 minutes. Going up the lift hill on the left is the Wild Eagle. You can see the wonderful Eagle themed trains. That's the park's big wing coaster. It is on the hill in the middle of the park. And we like to think of it as, at least here in the loop, it always seems to be the guests, whenever they talk about a roller coaster at Dollywood, the normal Dollywood guest is always like, have you ridden the Wild Eagle? <laughs> Wonderful giant eagle sculpture as well. Now, Wild Eagle fits a lot of people on each train. It is too intense for some kids. So Wild Eagle, much like Tennessee Tornado, the lines don't tend to be that bad. Oh, and there goes the fire chaser. Launching out of the station. You see the cool fire truck themed trains. Goes up past the waterfall. And now continuing on this path. And one thing I do like about Dollywood, I think it's really cool. Next to a lot of their roller coasters, they'll also have like playgrounds or something like that. So if there's kids that are not tall enough for the ride, they are not bored waiting on a bench. They could be, you know, going on some slides or this one, you, I think you get to put like, like little boats or something or build with Legos. So it's actually, it's very nice how Dollywood does that. I think it's, that's very good theme park design. It's a guest satisfier. Oh, 100%. I, uh, I think it's a very smart design to yeah. have the little kids playground right next to other rides. If you love your hands and you want a copy of them made with wax, you could do it right there. That one I have never done. No. <laughs> All right, there are some more snack shacks over here. Funnel cake at, that's just adorable looking. Look at Splinters. That is cute. Yeah. That's a cute side. A gift shop if you wanted anything that's, uh, this is built for Fire Chaser Express. There's still a little bit of Fire Chaser merchandise in here, but a lot of like Dollywood stuff. Right. On our left is a booth that sells hot dogs. Hot dog. You can get a hot dog topped with mac and cheese. Okay, that's a good hot dog. Yeah. Over here on the left, if you've been to Dollywood before, this is where the river battle attraction used to be. That closed down probably about five, six years ago. After that, it was just kind of a place to relax. They would use it for different festivals. It would be where the big projection Christmas tree is during their Christmas event. Now it is um, all walled off. They've kind of bulldozed the area. Not sure what's happening there. They have not announced it, right? Yeah. No. Um, Dollywood has come out and said that for 2025, next year, they are going to be putting in a fancy new restaurant, as well as doing some parking lot expansions. So it could be a restaurant. I think that's what we're going to see over here. Yeah. I would love to see them build a big giant indoor restaurant with, um, you know, lots of different counters, something like a Harmony Hall at Carowinds or a beer garden at the Bush Gardens parks. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing, uh, Dollywood is a dry park. Yes. And it's odd since it's in Tennessee, and Tennessee is known for, in this area, their moonshine. Indeed. Uh, so I'm not sure how the beer garden would work if you're a dry oh, park. Oh, yeah, I guess I, I, so, I think of the idea, the essence of a beer the garden. The essence, yes, okay. <laughs> or just, you know, maybe get with the times and start selling beer, one or the other. Maybe, maybe. I will stop over here. This is one of my favorite photo ops here at Dollywood. <laughs> sorry, sorry. These little birds in the nest, it is adorable. Okay. You can see the big loop from the Wild Eagle roller coaster. Again, it's a coaster you can't really see from the midway, except that loop. Yeah. This big building right there in front of us, that is a kind of a divisive roller coaster here at Dollywood. It is the Mystery Mine. It is another roller coaster that's pretty well themed. Yeah. But it does bang you around. I will say it's probably my least favorite coaster. I have not gone on it for a couple years. You've gone on it by yourself. Yeah. So I might have to give it a try because you did tell me it was a little bit better last time you rode it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did get a bruise the last time <laughs> I rode it, like three years ago. And that, that's, you know, uh, we talked about good theme park design. <laughs> that is an example of bad theme park design. But it's a really good theme, uh, yeah, it, the it's very a, beginning. Oh man, the beginning and then the, the big surprise in the middle. 
it's a very well themed, it's a mine train roller coaster that's actually well done. I, I really like Mystery Mine. Yeah, but, you always go on it. Yeah, but I'm also a, a big sucker for themed attractions. Yeah, you are. <laughs> that is very true. Mm -hmm. uh, most of this coaster you can see from the yeah. new way. For me, this one of the rides that put Dollywood on the map for like as a roller coaster fan standpoint. Yeah. When now did it open? That opened around yeah. 2007, I believe. Okay. The line's not not too bad. No, not yeah, too bad. All right, now we're met with another fork in the road. We're going to take the fork to the right up this hill here, and that's going to take us to Wildwood Grove, which is the newest area of Dollywood. And it does dead end. It so does. We're yeah. We're going to pick it back up. We'll here. pick it up back at Mystery Mine. Yeah. Now, Wildwood Grove, I believe, opened in 2019 or 2020, and it was a very expensive project for Dollywood. I believe it was either like 30 or 39 million dollars they spent on this new section of the park. We'll get to it in a little bit, but you can see Drop Line, the park's drop tower going up there. Love that drop tower because the cart, it spins as you go up, and you're like 200 feet in the air, so you get an amazing view of not only Dollywood, but the Smoky Mountains as well. Yes. It's actually, it's one of my favorite drop towers anywhere just because of that view. Mm -hmm. It does hold you up at the top for a while though. It does, it does. That's the part that kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. And I don't think it counts you down either. You just nope, drop. You, you just drop it. But you have no idea when you're going to drop. You just drop. It, it, there's that hold, it, it goes on for a while. <laughs> As we wander into Wildwood Grove, it's kind of a, a whimsical forest themed environment. There it goes. That was a lot of screams. That was. This also has your uh, little kid, your yes, family. Absolutely. Yeah, toddler type ride. You see the hit till and harvest food hall? We ate in there earlier for some $15 nachos. The nachos were good though. Yeah, that's, yeah they were good. <laughs> they weren't great. <laughs> Not worth the 15. No. And like Molly mentioned, a lot of a uh, lot of rides for the little ones and the families. Like you probably get a pretty cool view here on the treetop tower. Yeah, that one we've never died. No. They do have another soda refill station here. Yeah, they're all over the place. That, that, that's really good. Now, this area can get very hot as there's very little shade in the summer. No, unfortunately, um, this section of Tennessee has been prone to wildfires. Yeah, both of them. So it, if you went to Dollywood maybe maybe 10 years ago, you would have noticed a lot more trees around the roller coasters and trees around the park. Like this brand new roller coaster here, Big Bear Mountain, the newest roller coaster at Dollywood. There is really no trees around it yeah, because no it was kind of an insurance thing where they wanted, you know, like, hey, the insurance people said, don't don't build trees next to the ride. We don't want it burning down. Which you can't blame them. You can't. No. But again, no shade in this area. Mm -hmm. Also, you will get a lot of rides in this section. That's kind of like off the shelf rides that you will see at a lot of other amusement parks. Not Big Bear Mountain. That's, that one's pretty unique. But then that is, again, a very family friendly roller coaster. Yeah. Over here on the left, you do have a big swinging ship style ride. Another good ride for the, the whole family as well. It is the giant tree swing. A uh, big bear mountain. I really think that one's a good ride too. Uh, yeah. Kind of disappointing. There is no animatronic. You're looking for a bear. You spoiler alert, you never find a bear. No. And this looks great over here. Yes. But it's a really long ride, and that's like the only part that is themed. The rest of it's. Uh, it, it, they, the ride's called Big Bear Mountain. It probably should have been named Big Bear Field. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not really on the mountain. No. Uh, but this one also, you can see a lot. So if you have a kid or someone that's hesitant of roller coasters. Yeah, it's a good starter one, roller. It's very gentle. Starter, and two, you can see most of the ride. Yeah. And I, I think it works very well for the the Dollywood clientele. Yeah. Oh, no, we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's another water bomb. So this is another kind of themed Pretty. area from here, but and, on the ride you can't see it. And there's also parts of Wildwood Grove I really like where this waterfall starts here, it goes under there, it runs through this kid's splash pad and into a different lake over there. Yeah, it's very well designed. Now Molly, I think this might be the most adorable ride in all of Dollywood. Oh yeah. This is Black Bear Trail and you ride on little black bears. And it's just, it's fantastic. It's uh, kind of like moose on the loose at Darien Lake, Except right? just not nearly as good. Yeah, it doesn't talk to you. No. But it's still a really cute ride. 
Now, if you're here during certain seasons of the year where Dollywood will do fireworks and drone shows, this is the place you would want to view that from. This is the best viewing section for those fireworks and drone shows, which would be proudly presented over there. Mm -hmm. On the left, about to go, that is the Dragonfire roller coaster. A very low capacity ride, so get there. Early. Oh yeah, that, that's that one. one crawls. I love the first drop into a tunnel and this big overbank there. That is fun. Now, is that a clone ride from somewhere else? Yeah, that ride does exist nowhere else in the U.S., but you will find it overseas in a couple different parks. All right. The Big Bear Mountain really takes up that entire like back section of Wildwood Grove. If you really enjoyed your time here at Wildwood Grove and you need to buy some Wildwood Grove souvenirs or Big Bear Mountain souvenirs, they are on sale over here on the right at Mountain Grove Merchants. They actually have some pretty pretty good merchandise in there. A lot of stuff that you would find like a campground or a national park mm -hmm. kind of motif to it. Now, if you're looking for rides for the little ones, Frogs and Fireflies is one of those. Which I believe adults can ride. We learned that recently. You can. I, I probably wouldn't go on. on I probably wouldn't go on without a child, but I think you can ride yes. with your kid. Yes. Uh, then, not meeting right now, you can meet Benjamin the Bear. Yes. Which is the ma mascot here. One of the few uh, characters that you can meet and greet. Yes, because uh, Dollywood is not like. You know, they don't have a Mickey Mouse. No, yeah. <laughs> as much as I would love to see them have like a giant foam head Dolly Parton, they do not have a giant foam head Dolly I, Parton. I don't know how I'd feel about that. that I think it, I, I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> they would probably get a line for that. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, the Hidden Hollows here. That's good. That is an indoor playground, right? An indoor air conditioned and heated playground. So if you need to cool off, your kids need to blow off some steam. There are benches in there for the parents as well. That was a very smart thing when it they is. built this. Yeah, it is. And this is a fun ride. Yeah, these are always fun. You can always control how much you turn and stuff. Yep, this one's themed to mockingbirds. You definitely uh, turn more than I do. Yeah. I, uh, I usually yeah. don't turn much at all. <laughs> no, now, as we reach the dead end section of Wildwood Grove, is where you get the entrance to both of the roller coasters. Dragonflyer is going to be over here on the left. And Big Bear Mountain is going to be farther down on the right. I will say when it comes to the future of Dollywood and looking ahead to like, oh, where might they build new rides? Past Big Bear Mountain is definitely going to be one of those places where they build new rides. Yeah, you showed it me on the map of how much land and stuff they own back there. And there's like a pathway that they built and just cuts off at a wall. It's hard because you never know what's buildable with it being on a mountain and stuff. Oh, I think that's but buildable it, land I back say, there. It looks like uh, it's buildable if you look at the mm -hmm. satellite version of it. Yeah. And also, Big Bear Mountain, great sign. It does. This is my uh, 600.5 coaster. <laughs> yep, that is. And there you can see it launching out there. I also love how it has headlights. And Big Bear Mountain, it'll talk to you on the ride. It'll have an onboard audio system. And it'll be all sorts of like bear themed puns. It's yeah, actually I very wonderful. Puns. I think that's part of my favorite part. All right, so this will bring us to that dead end. We'll meet you back by Mystery Mine. And we are back. Gonna show you on the map how we started off. We started off here, then we went this way. We took the right to go down towards Lightning Rod. Then we came back up past the Smoky Mountain Rampage. Took us over towards the County Fair section. Over here, and that's where I did stop the video. Picked it back up at the Back Porch Theater. Then we went up through Craftsman's Valley. Up here on the left, that's where that Barnstormer is. Past all the different shops and the birds. On the left, that's where that log plume was. We went up past Tennessee Tornado past Fire Chaser and the Wild Eagle. Then we took the right fork and went through Wildwood Grove. And that brings us back right to here, where much like the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, it is time to finish the story <laughs> as my arm and my voice are getting tired. There's not that much left. There is not. Can't see the line here for Mystery Mine. Now Mystery Mine only has eight people on each roller coaster car. So while that line doesn't look that long, it does tend to move a little on the slower side. Yes. A uh, lower capacity ride, that's for sure. Super fun though, I, I like it. Yeah. And, uh, I've never been on it, it's definitely fun with the uh, elements, you never know what's coming. It's like a surprise. And also the, the area has the soundtrack of the Mystery Mine ride playing. Yeah. I think that's Big it. 
upside down moment at the end there on Mystery Mind. It was uh, animatronic over here. Yes. Uh, he talks to you, right? Yeah, sometimes it will be an interactive animatronic, sometimes it is not. <laughs> it's definitely a fun little effect. Yeah. I'm all for theme parks having more animatronics. <laughs> yes. Now, as you can tell from the midway today, Dollywood does get very, very crowded. Keep in mind, like, we're not here in peak summer. This is a Friday in early May when school is indeed in session. So there is a lot of school groups here. You can see there the is, yeah. <laughs> once those Once those buses leave, though, the park's going to be really good. Yeah, whenever they leave. Uh -huh. Who knows? On the left here is a small ride called Lumberjack Lifts. A cool ride for the little ones. You kind of pull yourself up on a rope and it spins around. You can see the drop line once again going up its big 200 foot climb. And it's like these little uh, pieces that make the charm of Dolly. Yeah, or even this ride over here, you know, it's built around a stream. Uh, Dolly would just a very, very pleasant yeah. place. Pulling that rope. Yep. It's a little bit of a workout. Yeah, and be careful, you can't get rope burn. I have had that happen to me before, and it is not great. <laughs> left is the second place where you can get pizza here at Dollywood. Up, oh, you can see that getting ready to drop once again. It's also a very pretty area with the water. Yeah. Uh, drop line tends to have a pretty short line as well. I think it's too frightening for a lot of people. It's uh, very tall. There it goes. Mm -hmm. But can you see the fireworks from here? I would say you could still see it, but the when they're doing like the projections and stuff, you're not going to be at the right angle for the the drone. Okay, so if you're just looking for the firework, fire yeah. Here's some of that wonderful lake area. This was originally built for a ride called Topple Tower, which was a very short-lived attraction at Dollywood. I rode it. It was not overly interesting. It looked great. It didn't ride great. What was it? Um, it was kind of a big tower ride, and then it would just like tilt to one side or the other. Okay. It was it's weird. Big. There is still one left. It's in uh, it's in Europe somewhere. <laughs> We're coming up to a kids coaster. Yes, this is Whistle Punk Chaser, which is the uh, the Dollywood roller coaster for the little ones. Uh -huh. You can see it going around there with its bright orange track. Adults can ride. Yep. So if you're themselves. if you're somebody that counts roller coasters, then you can go and get your roller coaster credit. The final roller coaster at Dollywood here on the right, that is Thunderhead. It is a big wooden roller coaster. And with Thunderhead, some years it runs really, really well. Some years it has not run well. Very happy to report that this year Thunderhead is running very, very good. Oh, it's very nice. Rode earlier today and it is, it's an awesome wooden roller yes, coaster. it is. Now one of the most classic uh, pictures. Yeah, right that's, that's a cute photo. That is a very cute photo. And lots, lots more stuff like this where the kids can play if they, uh, you know, maybe they didn't want to ride Thunderhead. And I think uh, that's pretty much it. You have this uh, pathway coming up that will take you back to the front. Yeah, this is um, kind of uh, takes you right back to the front of Dollywood. And uh, for a long time, Dollywood was not like a full circle park. Mm -hmm. Like when I first visited Dollywood, I think it was back in 2007, it was just kind of like a big U. And then they eventually finished the park and they continued to expand and get bigger and better. But during Christmas time, they have a light uh, dome. Not yep. dome, but... Uh, light tunnel, I believe. Tunnel, yes. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, and then I will kind of do it for our full park walkthrough of Dollywood. Uh, overall, my thoughts on Dollywood, I like Dollywood a lot. I think it's a great park. It's but I will really well themed. Yeah, it's very pleasant. And um, I think they hit... It's the different quadrants very well. There's things for the little ones to do. There's things for the older ones to do. It's a great family park. But I will say it is also one of the most expensive theme parks in the entire country. That is true. Uh, one day ticket, $92. And again, it's always crowded. It's just like Disney. Yeah. You won't have really a slow, slow day. I am not unlike Disney or Universal, it is about half the price of those parks. Yes. But it is um, it's still very crowded. So it's like you know, it's, it is it is very much like that Walt Disney World problem where the two most common complaints about somewhere like a Dollywood would be, oh, it's too expensive, but it's also too crowded. Mm -hmm. And you really can't fix one without the other. No, you can't. 
Um, but I really love it. I think they have a good collection of rides, yeah. uh, especially coasters. So if you have kids in giant age group gaps, <laughs> you have enough for your little ones that might be a little timid for some of the bigger coasters. And then you have those thrill coasters for the older ones. Um, and at the same time, I got to mention that if the $92 to get in was not enough, it is also $25 to park your car. And you can park very far away. Yes. <laughs> um, and the food and beverage, not cheap. It's good, yeah. but it's not cheap like that. That soda bottle we got that we've been refilling all day, that was about $20. But I do uh, love the theming here, how it, they use the mountain, they built into the mountain, they have the streams. It's a really pretty Instagrammable park, I feel. Yeah, I do. I wish I would see them add more indoor rides. Like, I think the park could really use a, a marquee dark ride or a flying theater. I think that would be very, very popular, especially with some of those older demographics. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dollywood's great. It's an up and coming park with the amount of investment they've been putting in here. They've invested a lot. Tons of money. They and built two hotels recently. So invested. Yep. And there we go. That'll bring us back the front of the park is right there that was at gospel theater and uh thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions about dollywood any questions about pigeon forge and gatlinburg let us know one of my favorite vacation spots we're up here at least once a year and i am going to go rest my arm and my voice thank you for watching